Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Brendan Lee with Consciousness and Skill Worldwide. I've got another query, and this one I'm judging is a bit weird. So here we go. And I'm likely to struggle, so be forewarned. Here it is. Question for you. Since perception is indirect, everything is a distinction, and I live in a conceptual world, okay? Tell me why killing myself off or suicide is not the most obvious thing to do since I'm not enlightened. This is a thought experiment. It just seems that if one is living in a world which is not real, wouldn't it be wiser not, wiser to not live or to commit suicide? Um, there should be a question mark in there, by the way. There's no question mark, that would be good. All right. So I'm going to respond to this, and first of all, one, uh, okay, uh, I, I want to be clear here that this is a thought experiment, and, and I question the value of my presentation, okay? Um, two, the, the nature of the, the content seems perhaps a little bit sensitive, and, and I in no way want to condone suicide. I've heard some rumors of people who talk to others in a perhaps spiritual domain or life coaching or some kind of like you may consider me some sort of authority on some matter regarding human growth, human potential, human development or whatever, whatever box you're going to put me in. And I am not in support of suicide. Okay. So if you try to blame me for that crap, you can go fuck yourself. You hear that? Because it's not me. It's not on me. I'm not warning you right now. All right, so here we go. I'm going to work on this, and we'll see where we go. Since perception is indirect, it is. So what is meant by that, perception is indirect? What is meant by that is your, what you perceive, you do not directly encounter anything. You only encounter everything via indirect methods like sight. You see something, right? So say there's like something here and you say you see it, right? You feel it. You smell it. You taste it. You sense it. Now what's the it? How do you know something like an it? Say we pick something that's an it, right? We could use a pencil. We could use a phone. We could use something, right? doesn't matter. Just any it could be a thought. Now, how do you know it? You should notice that you only know anything via perceptive faculties. And those can go away. You see, your sight is not permanent, right? So check this out. Say there's an it. And then you say, all right, I see it. But your sight can go away. Then what do you have if, of it if your sight goes away? You don't have a sight. And you say, yeah, but then I can feel it, right? But check this out. If, you, if you're feeling it, your feeling is not the same as your sight at all. They don't overlap. You either see something, but you can't tell via the sight what it feels like for the most part. Okay? Like if you close your eyes and then somebody throws the thing at you, you're not going to feel it coming unless you maybe hear it. But that's a different perception, you see. So not, you, what, what I'm saying is you don't actually have the thing itself. You only have your perception of it. Always, always, always. This is always the case until it's not. You know, or taking from science, say you see... The thing, but you don't see all of it. You only see the light that bounces off of this and gets to your eyes. You don't, and you, and there's whole ranges of the color spectrum that you don't get, like UV and infrared. You cannot see that. So then you say, well, you're only seeing a limited range. You're not even seeing the whole thing. And you don't, you don't see the same thing as a fly or a dog. You see, so then what's the real thing? We think ours is the real. We think our perceptions are real, and we're, we're incorrect about that. They are not the real. They are as real as we can get. But then if I ask you, well, what is it if you cannot see it, you cannot think it, you cannot feel it, you cannot hear it, you cannot smell it, we still think there's something there. 
Like after we die, for example, we're, we are convinced that the, the things will still be there, but we still don't know their nature. We only have a perception of it, and it's indirect. Okay, so you're following so far? All right, cool. Now, everything is a distinction. I live in a conceptual world. Yes, you do. You know, concepts like door or inside, outside, language. You cannot understand me without concept. You cannot leave a room without concept. Okay? If you have a problem with this so far, you know, just check it out for yourself. I'm making assertions here, and then the invitation is you may have a thought about that I'm wrong about the assertion. That is great. That's totally fine with me. You may not believe me. That's also totally fine. I want to invite you to check it out for yourself, you know, uh, and take a look. It might, you might find something out that's fascinating. At least I think so. Tell me why killing myself off is not the most obvious thing to do since I'm not enlightened. Um, that makes no sense. Uh, my first, so thought experiment. My first thought on that, my first thought, which again, I do not take my thoughts very seriously. Some I do, but in this case, I do not want you to take my thinking seriously. I want you to become conscious, you know? I want you to become more conscious than you are. So my thinking is really kind of worthless, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spill it anyway against my better judgment. So tell me why killing myself off is not the most obvious thing to do since I'm not enlightened. Why, why, and am I, so my question would be perhaps, why would you think because you're not enlightened you shouldn't live? There's a huge assumption there, and, and one huge assumption there that I can spot right off the bat is if you don't know what you are or you don't know your true nature, like you're not enlightened, you don't know if you're alive or not. I know that's not going to sound good. <laughs> You're going to be like, what the what? How can I not be alive? But check it out. If you don't know what you are, and all you have of you are indirect perceptions, you don't know what's really there. You only know what you perceive to be there. See? So you don't know if you actually are alive. And don't you think it'd be good to find that out before you go commit suicide? Again, I'm not a proponent of suicide. Don't. There's helplines for that. And do not try to pin that on me, please. Okay? Now, the second thing is, tell me why killing myself off is not the most obvious thing to do since I'm not enlightened. It seems to me that the, the thought itself, like, it's like the thought itself, let's look at that. Let's become a little more conscious, a little more aware of what the thinking is itself. That sounds to me like a conclusion is being drawn. Like, I, first of all, I conclude, one, I'm not enlightened. I must be having to look out at the world and see, oh, I make an assessment that I'm not enlightened. Therefore, why should I live? But the assessment itself is based on assumptions that you don't know if they're true or not. So why, why do the killing? Seems like there's no point. And if you've made a conclusion based on an inappropriate assumption or, or an assumption that you don't realize you have, then you're drawing a conclusion based on something that you don't know if it's real or not. So I would recommend, say, go figure out and become conscious of what the assumptions are and what's really true in the matter because it may turn out that you already are not alive and or what I mean by that is perhaps you already are as if outside of life and death in the first place. And wouldn't you want to know if that's true? So, so you can see where my opinion lies, right? Um, another thing is, like, like, like for example, I did a, a previous video on, on the meaning of life, right? And then I, I say in there, I assert that the life has no meaning other than what you create, you see? And therefore, but life itself is meaningless. There is no meaning. We create the meaning. And then people might have this, this thing that comes up, and I've heard this before, is, 
well, if life is meaningless, then what should I, why shouldn't I just commit suicide? Or it's meaningless, therefore, oh my God, it's bad. They have a reaction to it. But take a look at your reaction. The reaction is more meaning. Hello? It's more meaning. That's not meaningless. That's full of meaning. And it's bad. You see? So to, to make, it mean, make it mean something that it's meaningless is still caught in the same thing. So then people might say, well, then what, why, why should I do anything, right? And then I say, well, why not do anything? They're the same conclusion, which to me nullifies both. Just live, just be, okay? Now, another aspect that I want you to consider, just taking a look, and, and again, thought experiment, again, I don't care. This is just foo-foo stuff that I'm putting up for your entertainment and hopefully for some return on my investment and time and bringing value to you. If I want you to come do work with me, pay me money. See, I would like that. So I can give you more value that way. Is consider the body itself. See, one thing to consider is the body, the body is amazing. And you, 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 you might take it for granted, but you try to build something like this. You, we can't even build cars that last 20 years. Bodies can last like 90 years. We can't build that. These are amazing. And they don't die all on their own. If you don't feed it, if you don't shelter it, keep it warm, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pass. But, but by itself, it's a living organism. You see, that's, my, that's the perception. And, and when I label living organism, we don't really know what bodies are, by the way. That's an aside. Check that out. We'll do more on that later. I don't know. And per perhaps. And so if the body doesn't just die naturally, then screw it. B stick around for a while. Enjoy. You're going to die at some point. See? Your body's going to die. You're going to go away. Maybe you, really you, doesn't go anywhere. But that's enough. Who knows? Who knows? We hear rumors. We don't stand on hearsay here. Some people, many people stand on hearsay and beliefs and faith. Not here. Not on this channel. I mean, you can if you want, but that's, that's on you, not me. See, the body doesn't just pass on. It doesn't just die itself. So, hey, enjoy that. You know, and like uh, Peter might say, um, you know, fine, if you, if you want to commit suicide... If you can just will your body to die, go ahead. But suicide by any other means, nah, no point. Okay? Now, um, another aspect is that I want to throw in here is, is a hypothesis on my part, and, and I, I suspect I'm correct about this. So if people are watching this, and, and if there are people watching this that are not happy, hoping to get happy, First of all, I want to, want to encourage you to uh, uh, be happy now. Do that. Uh, second of all, I want you to know that I do not, I'm not here to help people become happy. I'm not here to fix people. I am here to get people conscious. I'm here to get people more skillful. That's my, that's my deal. If you need help healing, go somewhere else. Talk to a professional, not me. I may recommend professionals, but that's not my job. You know, I'm not interested in that. I will get you conscious. I'll get you skillful. So something to consider that, that I have a hypothesis about suicide is people who are committing suicide are not trying to kill themselves. They are avoiding pain. They want pain to stop happening. Okay? Okay which in a certain sense, I feel very sad about that because for the most part, the pain of which I speak is not generated by external circumstances. You do the pain. Or another way to put that, the pain is not who you are. It's something you experience. And usually the way we experience the pain is as if it's caused by an external force or an external circumstance. 
And then usually people have a story about why they're in pain. Like, oh, I got raped when I was young. My dad beat me. Um, I, I had hopes and dreams, but then I fell off a horse, broke my leg, and all my dreams were smashed. And I've just been a mess ever since. I'm an alcoholic and da 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 on and on with the story, okay? So the, like this whole package deal seems to me comes together and there's a lot of pain about that. And when people are really immersed in that pain, they want to end it. They want to end the pain, not their life. They just want the pain to go away. So if you're watching this and you are in a lot of pain, I would please invite you to consider that you are the one responsible for the pain, not other people. And if you hold it that other people are responsible for your pain, no matter how severe the circumstance, then you will be in pain and they will be responsible. But that's not the truth. You're lying to yourself about that. Okay. Now, I'm not saying this is true for every circumstance. I'm sure there are some circumstances that are way out of your control and horrid beyond belief. I have never lived that. and I've never lived through anything like that. See, so I don't know how I would do. But one thing I do know is that the, your, there may be circumstances that are out of your control, but your relationship to those circumstances is under your control. It just may not be easy to relate to that stuff in a way that's empowering and healthy. But I want to invite you to do that, if that's the case. Okay? So there you go. That's what I have with this thought experiment. I do, even though I may come across a certain way, I do thank you for your contribution to my channel and your contribution to my own considerations, because as I read these questions I also consider and I get value for myself when I do. And then I also think that I hope to provide something of value to you people who are listening to me chatter on in a dojo in Texas or meditation hall, whatever it is, um, while I'm rocking and rolling. Okay, so thanks again, Brennan Lee Consciousness and Skill Worldwide. Much love. Catch you later.